Hi folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria. So, um, I've actually avoided talking about modern martial arts for the most part, um, i.e. MMA as it's commonly known, or um, UFC type fighting, uh, or, or comparing it indeed with traditional martial arts, largely because I have almost no experience, no personal experience whatsoever of uh, MMA or indeed of many modern martial arts at all really. Um, however, I do have a little bit of experience of uh, self-protection, self-defence type stuff um, and of course I've been alive for 38 years and, um, and I've made certain observations during my time involved with martial arts and time just kind of um, living and you know seeing fights and how they, um, how they unfold in reality and I've had a job where which I've mentioned before, where I've had to read crime reports quite a lot and look at nasty photos of people who've been stabbed a lot and things like that. Um, and I also have friends in the police force and the military and various other um, sort of areas where modern violence occurs, unfortunately. Um, and so I do have certain views about modern martial arts and uh, self-defense and self-protection. Self and um, one of the things that I see comes up a lot uh, in comments underneath my videos is the question of traditional martial arts versus MMA or cage fighting type stuff. And what I really want to say in this video is context is just as important in the modern world and modern martial arts as it is in history or anything else. Okay, So um, if we if we just consider for a second, there's a there's a prevailing view these days that a lot of traditional martial arts are essentially useless or almost useless because they've been superseded by MMA and that putting putting uh, a load of um, fighters into a cage and letting them duke it out gets you to some kind of conclusion about what the superior martial art is. Well, what I would put to you is that every martial art is developed within a certain context. Okay, So if we look at Thai boxing, for example, form of kickboxing, then it's very clear that that developed as a sport with very specific rules to it. Equally, if we look at Kendo, Kendo looks very different to Japanese traditional swordsmanship, Kenjutsu, um, and that's because Kendo developed as a sport within certain parameters. Um, there's very limited types of footwork in kendo, there's no grappling, there's no kicking or punching or elbowing, there's no disarming, uh, there's only certain types of attacks that are given with the sword, and in fact a lot of the hits with the sword are not given in the way that you would normally cut with an actual katana. Um, and obviously, also, it's very different to armoured fighting, because as we know, as I'm sure all of my regular viewers know, you know armoured fighting is very different to unarmoured fighting, because you don't want to just hit armour, you want to bypass the armour, either thrusting in gaps or cutting at vulnerable parts or whatever, which is very different to what we see in the unarmoured part of swordsmanship. And this goes through to MMA as well. MMA is mixed martial arts, as, as the acronym would, would suggest, that have essentially evolved and developed to win in a very specific environment on mats, with no shoes, with no other opponents around, with no external threats, there's no hard ground, there's no curbs, there's no lamp posts, there's no you know, knives or bottles involved, um, and of course there's no eye gouging and uh, fish hooking and those various techniques that they're not allowed to do. Um, there's no uh, grabbing of people's testicles and twisting and things like that. So, there it is very much a sport. Now, it is quite a what we would call no holds barred sport in the terms that it's it's less sporting, should we say? Oh, no, that's not the right term. It's there are less parameters, perhaps, uh, than if we compare to boxing. Greensbury rules boxing with boxing gloves on, or if we compare to judo, for example. However, whilst it is more, perhaps more violent and more uh, injuring and more hardcore, we could say, there nevertheless are parameters. And uh, for me, one of the most basic parameters is that it is very much a protected and safe fight between one person and another person that pretty much always ends not always, I know, but pretty much always ends in a long protracted fight on the ground. 
Now, my observations from uh, life and reading crime reports is that if there's one thing you don't want to do in a real self-defense, self-protection, whichever term you prefer, in a real situation, is you don't want to spend a long time rolling around on the ground. And one of the main reasons for that is these. Okay? Uh, and one of the other main reasons for that is other people. Um, and so, very simply, if we look at the um, self-defense and self-protection systems of the late 19th century, so if we look at Bartitsu and Savat and um, the uh, Défense de la Rue, um, the French system which is similar to um, Bartitsu and has some interrelation with it, if we look at those, a lot of it is about staying on your feet so that you have the ability to run away and indeed you have the ability to defend yourself from weapons or multiple opponents. Now, if there's one thing that is really, really bad for defending yourself from weapons or defending yourself from multiple opponents or being able to run away, it's rolling around on the floor for a long time. Now, that's not to say that MMA doesn't teach amazing skills. Of course it does. It's, um, you know, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu combined with kickboxing and combined with the other popular Western boxing as well, combined with the popular elements that make up most MMA these days, of course do teach you to be a good fighter. But what we must realise is that just fighting the MMA fight in the way that it's fought in the ring would not be sensible in the street. Um, if you're faced with an assailant who has a knife, um, then rolling around on the floor for a long time is generally speaking not a good idea. Uh, commanding the knife and knowing how to fight against someone with a knife is, uh, is a skill in itself and we're better looking at things like Krav Maga for stuff like that. Um, or indeed traditional medieval and renaissance martial arts or, or elements of Jiu Jitsu, of traditional Jiu Jitsu that is, the anti-knife stuff. Um, and uh, if we're dealing with fighting against multiple opponents, again, you wouldn't want to fight the traditional MMA style, let's go to the ground as quickly as possible and put you in a submission hold, because that's not going to do me any good, because while I've got someone in a submission hold, in a choke hold, or an arm bar, or a leg bar, or whatever, um, their friend is stamping on my cranium until it cracks. Um, so it's not a good idea to get engaged with one person and locked in for a long period of time. You want to be up on your feet, kicking and punching. So, to bring this full circle, I'm not in any way bashing on MMA. It's, it's pretty much the most um, effective way that most people can learn a uh, really hardcore real martial art um, for f real fighting skills, unarmed fighting skills these days. I would argue if you want to learn armed fighting skills, probably one of the best places to learn it is in a HEMA club. Um, even more so than traditional Japanese clubs because I think that we in HEMA we train people up quicker, I think, and we also use more varied equipment and varied approaches um, and probably have more open sparring as well. Um, but what I am saying is that we shouldn't always poo-poo traditional martial arts that don't do well in an MMA context. If saying, that, um, saying that certain types of Kung Fu, Wing Chun Kung Fu for example, is just rubbish because an MMA fighter in a cage fight completely wipes the floor with a traditional, traditional Wing Chun practitioner, all that really tells us is that in the MMA environment, in a cage fight, the MMA fighter is going to win. Um, but what it doesn't tell us is what Wing Chun was designed to do and the context that it was intended for. And in actual fact, uh, you know, Wing Chun was probably, to an extent, uh, certainly in the form that it's come down to us, partly a sporting um, uh, application. We know that in the 19th century in places like Shanghai there were boxing contests between uh, Chinese and in fact uh, British and American and other nationality pugilists um, and that they were competing at boxing essentially. Um, but equally if we look at some elements of Wing Chun, the kicks are fairly low, don't usually go above knee height, maybe occasionally the groin, um, which seems very effective from a self-defense point of view. High kicks are their high risk, high success potentially. If you if you connect with someone's head you might knock them out and that's the end of, end of that person's 
um, danger to you, but equally spending a lot of time with your feet high in the air is generally not a good self-defense tactic because someone will take you down or you'll end up on your ass at some point. Um, but so really what I'm saying is that all martial arts grow up to a context. Okay, so um, if we really want to look at self-defense, effective self-protection martial arts, we really need to look at the martial arts that have evolved for use in, generally speaking, either urban um, street defense situations or combat applications. So things more like um, sort of uh, commando manual stuff from the Second World War and, and since, um, or indeed Krav Maga, this kind of stuff, and most of that is about staying on your feet. There is, um, there's punching and elbowing and kicking and head butting in there, but there's a lot of anti-weapon stuff as well, using weapons and defending yourself against weapons and defending yourself against uh, multiple opponents. So there we go. Really just to say, context, context, context. Don't just say, oh, because karate gets its ass handed to it in the ring in an MMA fight against an MMA fighter, that MMA is the better martial art. It's all about context, okay? And if you want to talk about martial arts for use on the street, as we call it, the street, um, or indeed in combat zones, then generally speaking, MMA is probably not actually the best thing to look at because it spends, at least competition MMA, spends a lot of time on the ground and that's not generally what you want to do in real combat. Um, instead, probably better to look at the martial arts which are actually designed with combat, with real combat, as their priority rather than sport and competition. Cheers guys! Click subscribe now and also follow us on Facebook.